Welcome to another storyboarder tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing more with the shot generator, and we're going to be learning about posing these 3D characters. And so this is the kind of the shot we created last time. If you skipped that video, probably go back and watch it because we learned a lot of the basics about how to get around and change things around in the shot generator. And so I'm just going to grab this guy right here. And um, I know that it's a guy because under the character, let's look at the different options that we have. So we have um, adult female, adult male, which is what it is now, and then teen female, teen male, which really um, the teen male and the adult male, the only difference is the height. I'm pretty sure. Maybe they're a little bit thinner. But we can make all kinds of changes um, to the pose and the look of these models. And so what we can do, I'm going to come here and let's just go ahead and change the rotation a little bit so we get this person looking directly at us. And then let's change here. We're kind of at an angle, so we may have to move this a little bit. That wasn't super ideal. Let's let's move our camera around so that the camera is more looking straight. So we'll move the camera like this, and then we'll grab our model. Oh, that's our camera now. Go back to character, and then we'll move our character just like this. Okay, perfect. That's probably good for now. So we can click on the character to move them around, and then if we click outside the character, we move around the camera. So get kind of familiar with that. It's actually pretty good, pretty good interface. Um, so when the character is selected, uh, there's this little eye here that shows if we're toggling them being on or off. For example, this bookshelf might be getting in our way right now. So we can click on that object one and we can turn this eye off. So it's still here in our scene. We're just not seeing it right now because it might be distracting us. Um, so when the character is selected, we have the different options. We learned about XYZ moving them around, rotation. The height actually changes. This character is five foot ten. So if we know the actors or the or the people we're going to be using in this uh, in our in our story or in our film or whatever we're making, we can make them uh, make the the model the same height as they are, which will give us an accurate representation of how they'll look in the scene. Even the head size can be changed and adjusted. We've got these different morphs, which is like the body. So we've got like obese. We can make um, you know more or less weight. This is sort of some of these ones are like tone, like adding muscle and kind of like yeah, different just different body forms. So you can play around with these and change uh, the way the body shape. Uh, we can change like we talked about. We can do adult female, adult male. We can do kids, which are just like smaller kind of. But we'll just stick with the adult male. And then these ones have different poses. So if we already want a certain pose, we can just grab and see these different preset poses. And we can create our own pose and save our own pose in here as well. So let's just grab, um, we'll just go to maybe any random pose here, like this kind of default one. Now to make our own poses, we can click, there's f uh, what is it, five, five different points. So we click this point on the head, oh, and we have to get the right point selected. And then as this uh, kind of this joint moves around, it adjusts other joints as well. That only works when we click right on these circles. So there's some on each foot has one, and the bones kind of follow accordingly. So it's really cool. And so, and you have to get it, if you click in the wrong spot, it'll do something different. So each of these different bones have a different thing too. You see, this is a bone right here. This is like the femur bone, I guess you could say. So if we click on that, it gets selected in black, and then we could move just that bone. Um, if we click around like just on the bone, it moves the character around. But we see when we selected that, it brought up this little red, blue, and green circle. And this is how we move this bone around in 3D space. So this right now is rotating the leg on that axis. You see that? So it rotates just the leg around. We can do this blue one, which rotates it on that axis. And if we click on the red, it rotates it along that axis. There is an app, I haven't used it yet, but there's an app you can get for doing this. If you scroll all the way down on the character, you can use your phone and download the app, and that'll help with posing this as well. If you're finding it difficult to move these around in 3D space. But each one of these bones can be moved independent from each other, even like this, the head can. So we can rotate just the head without affecting the shoulders or anything else. But if we want to move the head and affect the shoulders and other bones, then we use these dots. So does that make sense? These dots are kind of a, 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 good, a good way to start getting involved because the bones are kind of more, uh, like if we wanted to turn the torso, we click this bottom bone right here, and then we turn, oh, that did the whole one. We want to do this second one, I guess. 
Let me zoom in. They're a little bit difficult to select, so now you have to change the angle. So this one lets us turn the torso uh, and kind of leave. So if you want to do a certain, you know, create a certain pose. But anyway, just know that you can click on these individual bones and control them individually. Or if you click on the circle, these kind of circle nodes, I'll call them, it moves the bones attached and kind of lets you kind of move in a, in a sort of natural, um, natural manner. If you get a pose that you really like, like maybe we do a crazy extreme one here doing the splits or something, and we want to save this pose as, as, a, as a pose, we can come up here and we just go to and click on, and we just go to this plus sign. So we click plus, and now say, what do you want to call this? So we'll call this the splits and go okay. And now we have a pose called the splits. I think it's going to put it right down here at the bottom. Oh no, that's free fall. Scroll all the way down. Wow, there's lots of poses here. It's somewhere in here. I think it puts them in alphabetical order maybe, but there's a way that you can search. This just search for a pose. So we can just start typing in splits and it comes up there. And there was already one called jump splits. That's so a, a stock one. And then here's the one we created called the splits. So you can create your own poses. If you find yourself using a pose over and over again, um, you can find um, that pose. Uh, I think that's all we're gonna talk about in this video. Go ahead and play with posing. Uh, your characters, you can have more than one. If you click character again, we get a second character in here so they can interact and you can create um, a pretty cool scene. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, lighting and creating our scenes and we can adjust the look and feel of this and kind of make it look, um, yeah, there's a lot more options here than we've just covered so far. But play with posing and get comfortable with that. That's really a super powerful thing um, that Storyboarder offers. And for a free program, uh, it's really quite amazing and quite uh, outstanding what they've been able to do. So go ahead and, uh, and uh, leave your questions and comments below if you have any. And we'll catch you in the next video.